So our first scenario is going to be a 14-month-old with failure to fly. Falls out of a three-story window, getting bagged by the medics. Vitals, as you see, with an ETA of four minutes. Which means, realistically, you have about three and a half minutes to get ready until this little pediatric trauma kid hits your door. And if all you have is that information, is this kid going to get tubed? Yeah. Not only based on vital signs, not only based on the fact that the child fell out of a three-story window, but more importantly, remember the American Lung Association summarizes it pretty nicely. Whereas their motto remains that if you can't breathe, nothing else matters. So with that, what size tube for a 14-month-old? Now, a couple ways you can figure that out. Number one, there's the fancy formula, which works really well if it's blown up six feet high in a conference room. But not so much when you're stressed and trying to do mental math. Number two, there's a little finger roll. You remember that one? And the little finger roll says endotubes unopened, still in the package. The bottom or the back of the package is clear. And if you put the tube next to the child's, not your little finger, that's more or less the size it's going to fit. Now, other options, we've got cheat sheets. And when it comes to cheat sheets, my personal recommendation that I really like, because it, again, has no batteries, no Wi-Fi, is blood and bodily fluid resistant, and it fits in your pocket, is the PD wheel. And the PD wheel comes included as part of scenarios and seconds. And if you take the PD wheel, remember you have age on one side and weight on the other. So when it comes to age, this is a 14-month-old, so we would simply go ahead, in our case, dial in 15 months, because it's remarkably close to 14 months. And when we dial it in, it says that a 14-month-old kid should get a four tube. When it comes to Hentevi, remember, Hentevi does color by age. So when it comes to this child, we're going to take the tape if we don't have an age, and we're just going to measure red to the head, down to the heels, and we're going to see that this child on Hentevi is a purple. So with that, if we take a look at Hentevi, again, you have color by age. And if you notice on the app, on the book, on the tape, you see one-year-old, you see two-year-old, but you don't see 14-month-old. So if you don't have the specific age, how do you figure out what color this kid is going to be? It's just go for the halfway point. So in our case, 14 months is closer to one-year-old than it is to two-year-old. So this child is going to be a purple. And with that, if you know this child is a purple or this child is a one-year-old, in the back of the rig, you can whip open the purple part of your jump bag on your little color-coded jump bag. Or in the ER, you can go ahead and just rip open the one-year-old or the purple drawer, and the equipment and medications will be ready for you. Now, when it comes to Braslo, remember, if you're purple on one, happily, if we go red to the head and measure down to the heels, we're purple on the other as well. So when you take a look at the Braslow tape, remember you have E and E, epi on one side and endo tube on the other. And on the Braslow tape, it tells you that a purple child should get a 4.0 uncuffed. But it also reminds you in the new version of the tape that if you're going to use a cuff tube, because now more and more places in sick kids are now going to cuff tubes in kids, then it reminds you that if you're going to use a cuff tube in a little kid, that you have to use a half size smaller. And if you were to go ahead and click and you look at the app for eBraslo, it would tell you, just like the tape, that this little kid gets a 4 uncuffed or a 3.5 cuffed. Now, when it comes to Hantevi, if you were to go ahead and take the book, and the book is pretty much a close approximation of what you see with the app. And if you take a look at the book, it will tell you that if you flip to one-year-old, you'd see that a one-year-old is purple, just like it would be on Braslow. 
And you would see that a one-year-old under ETT size says, just like Braslow, that you get a 4.0 uncuffed or a 3.5 cuffed. And if you were to whip out your phone and open up the Hentevi app, just like in the book, it would show you that you get a 4 uncuffed and a 3.5 cuffed. So now the problem is this kid's intubated. We've got to suck out the boogers. And why that's an issue is you whip open your crash card in the ER and you're going to find 5, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and yank car. So which one actually fits down a little kid's tube is called two times the size of the tube. And why this rule is kind of cool is it not only works for kids, but it works for babies and it works for adults as well. So whatever size this kid is intubated with, you double it and that's your suction catheter. So if this child gets intubated with a four, four times two is hopefully eight, and an eight French suction will easily pass down the tube. Now take that one step further, and that's the rule of two times equals suction. Two times also equals the appropriate size NG and Foley that you ought to pop in this kid. Meaning you've got a 4.0 tube, that means you get an eight French NG tube. If you go down the mouth, you get an eight French OG or orogastric tube because it's the same size, you're just going down this hole versus this hole. And as you look downstream, if you're gonna pop in a Foley or a urinary catheter, remember that it's an eight French as well. So two times equals NG suction Foley, and three times equals where you tape it. And an easy way to remember that is three begins with the letter T, and tube begins with the letter T, and triple begins with the letter T, and tube begins with the letter T, and teeth begin with the letter T. So I've now given you five choices, all of which begin with the letter T, cluing you in that three times is where you tape it. So with that, if you've got a kid who's got a 4.0 tube, that means eight French, eight French, eight French. And if you've got a 4.0 tube, four times three is hopefully 12. So 12 is more a guess where you tape the tube. Now that works well if you happen to take care of sick kids on a regular basis and you can remember the rule of two times three times. And once you get it in your head, it's really cool and it does actually work. But if you're stressed and you try to do mental math, again, it's not always the best combo. So other options, if you were to take your Braslow tape and you take a look at a purple child, it'll tell you that a purple child, you tape it ET insertion length at 11 to 12. And it says you get an eight French suction, an eight French Foley, and an eight to 10 French NG tube. If you were to look at eBraslow or the app associated with the system, it'll tell you that you tape it at 11 to 12 and you get an eight to a 10 French NG or Foley. But when you jump to Hentevi, you see you've got one year old, you see the child is purple and the purple kid, right? Because in our case, we've got 14 months. So if we've got a one year old purple, it says that we go ahead and tape it at 11 to 12, otherwise known as ETT at gum or teeth, it says you get a 10 French suction and you get an eight or a 10 French NG tube. And if you click open one year old or purple, it'll tell you that the child gets their tube taped at 11 to 12. Now IVs, where are you gonna put it is called anywhere. What size are you gonna put in is called anything except if you're an honest ER nurse or a paramedic. Because honest ER nurses and paramedics on the adult side will tell you that everybody has to get an 18 gauge. And somewhere along the way it was taught to many of us that if we try to get blood through anything smaller than an 18 gauge, it's gonna hemolyze. And that is not true. The way we know that is if you take a field trip to the baby ICU, You'll see that we start 24 gauges to the back of the head, we push blood through a 24 gauge in the back of the head, and it works just fine. Meaning any IV is a good IV. In a pinch, you can push whatever you want through anything you've got. Meaning in a little kid, whatever you've got works just 
fine. But if you can't find something pretty darn quick, then I.O., remember, is just a whole lot bigger, a whole lot faster, and a whole lot easier. Now, since everything is based, especially on the medication side, on how much the kid weighs, how much should a 14-month-old ideally weigh? Well, a couple ways you can figure this out. Number one, if you take your PD wheel and you dial in 15 months, because it's remarkably close to 14 months, it'll tell you that a 15-month-old kid weighs 10, 11, 12, make your life easy, go for the big bolded number in the middle. If you take a look at your Braslow tape for purple on one side, because remember that it's only listed the weight on one side, so if you don't see what you're looking for on one side, flip it over, it's on the other. And if you look at a Braslow tape, it says that a purple kid should be 10 or 11 kilos. If you look at the hand heavy tape, again, remember the end where it says start here at the child's head? Next to the big arrow is where it's got that cute little chart. And the cute little chart says one-year-old purple should weigh 10 kilos. Or if you take a look at the book. If you look at the book or the app, it'll tell you that a one-year-old is purple. And underneath the purple box, it says that a one-year-old ideal body weight is 10 kilos. So now fluids, it's going to be saline or ringers, just like in an adult. And adults, you remember, are simple. If they look crummy, we give them a liter. If they don't look better, you give them another liter. But you can't get away with that in a kid. Because if the IV bag weighs more than the kid does, that's a problem. And that's why everything is something per kilo. And remember, in children, we're taught that it's 20 cc's per kilo. And the way that I was taught, and still remember 20 per kilo, is it a sick kid? You're going to be on your knees saying, dear Lord, please help me find an IV somewhere between all those fingers and all those toes. And if you happen to count up all those fingers and all of those toes, how many do you hopefully come up with? And that's 20. So it's 20 cc's per kilo. Now, other ways, if you're stressed and you can't remember how to count, that's okay. Other ways to remember it is if you take a look at your PD wheel and you look at the part where, as it says, meds or interventions, it'll show you that normal saline, as a reminder, is 20 cc's per kilo. If you look at the Braslow tape, remember it's volume expansion crystalloid with parentheses normal saline or LR. And it'll tell you that you get 210 cc's. If you look at eBraslow or the app, it'll tell you you get the same amount. If you look at Hantevi in the book and you flip down to where it says normal saline bolus, in the shaded area, it'll tell you that you get 200 cc's. And if you look, because you opened up the app, it'll remind you that normal saline is 200 cc's on the app as well. But you also, when it comes to kids, just like adults, with few exceptions, you want to play baseball. Meaning three strikes, and you're out. Meaning, for most kids, three strikes or three hits of fluid should be more than enough to fill up your tank. And if you still look crummy after three hits, you know what? You probably need something else. Because either A, you're septic, because your blood vessels are like, yo, big. Well, just like adults, give them something to shrink the tank back down. Or, since this kid fell out of a window and they're a trauma, we'll just give the kid some blood. And when it comes to blood, adults are simple. We give them a unit. They don't look better. We give them another unit. When it comes to children, an easy way to remember blood is called blood is thicker than water. Meaning, count your fingers, count your toes. That's saline. Blood is thicker than water, so it's half that, or 10 per kilo, on blood. And when it comes to meds, the only drug I recommend back in the rig or the hospital, even, yes, at 4 a.m., you can correctly calculate is Abby. And remember, there is no such thing as newborn or pediatric Abby. It's good old-fashioned, sitting in your jump bag, sitting in your crash cart, Abby. 
And when it comes to epi, a couple ways you can try to remember without doing mental math the dose. If you were to take your PD wheel and you dialed in 11 kilos, because 11 kilos is remarkably close to 11 kilos, it'll show you that an 11 kilo kid gets 0 0.1 milligrams of epi. If you were to look at your purple child on Braslow, remember epi on one side, endo tube on the other. It'll show you that a purple kid gets 0.1 milligrams in parentheses, also known as 1 cc. If you were to click open your eBraslow app, you get 0.1 milligrams, also always known as 1 cc. If you look at the Hantebi book and you look down on the Epi IV, it says you get 0.1 milligrams, otherwise known as 1 cc. And if you were to click open your Hantebi app, imagine that, it says you get 0.1 milligrams, otherwise known as 1 cc. CC. But there is an even better way. Once you have the weight, you move that decimal point over one place, and that's your dose in mLs of epinephrine IV. So let's go through some examples. A one year old 10 kilo child, that's one mL of epinephrine. A three year old 15 kilo child, move the decimal point over one place, 1.5 mL. Five year old, is 2 ml, a 7 year old is 2.5 ml, and that 30 kilo 9 year old is 3 ml. And this is a really slick trick, and that's if you've got to push epi, whatever the kid weighs, just move the decimal point one time. So if the kid weighs 10 kilos, you move the decimal point one time, you push 1 cc. I'm a 100 kilo adult, which means if you move the decimal point one time, I get 10 cc's. Which if you think about it, it's called a box of epi. And if you're in the nursery with a little preemie who fits in your hand, who only weighs one kilo, you just move the decimal point one time and they get 0.1 cc. So whatever the kid weighs, just simply move the decimal point one time and check that out in two seconds you've now got the appropriate hit of epi. And if you're going to put this child to sleep, so you can go ahead and intubate them, otherwise known as RSI, do not memorize drug dosages. Just remember the same stuff you give every day to big people, you give to little people, just a smaller dose. So that means Versed or some variation thereof to go to sleep. And morphine, fentanyl, ketamine, Dilaudid to take away their pain. And when our residents played with us on transport, the unwritten rule was if we could, that every time we pushed one, we pushed the other. Because that way, if you mixed and matched, they were asleep, they were pain-free. And as an added bonus, they didn't remember the nasty things that people were doing to them. <laughs>